So I think most of us can kind of agree that Xbox had a great June showcase this year. They revealed a lot of their first party games, including Fable. They revealed Avowed, Clockwork Revolution. And then obviously we can't forget about Starfield. It had a massive and impressive presence there. But sounds like it didn't take Xbox all that long to reload. There is apparently more in store from them and fans might have yet another fun month this August. Yeah. We'll get into all that today. Also, it appears there's a new trend in the game industry with the rise of PC gaming handhelds. It looks like the Steam Deck was only just the beginning. If you're enjoying the video, though, do hit the like button. It helps the channel a ton. And if you're new to the channel, do make sure to hit that subscribe and ring that bell. I am here every week, Monday through Friday. And we're going to go get things started off today with Xbox Game Pass. They just revealed its first wave of August games, which we can actually see right here. It includes Celeste, which is out today. Short Hike will be out on August 3rd. Then you have Airborne Kingdom out on the 10th. Bro Force Forever, that will be out on August 8th. Then the ever popular Limbo, that will be out on the 9th. And then lastly, you have Everspace 2, which will be out on August 15th. So this isn't really the best lineup that they've ever had, but... I'd say that there still are a few good games here that I'd highly recommend to tide you over until the real craziness begins later this month. More on that here in just a second. Uh, but Celeste is honestly a must-play game if you haven't already. It is legitimately one of the best 2D platformers ever made, hands down. It's the right amount of challenging, the level design is absolutely amazing, and it also surprisingly has a good story. You don't really see that much when it comes to 2D platformers, but Celeste? It's a special breed, so definitely, definitely check it out. Limbo, of course, is also a classic for a very good reason. It's a physics-based puzzle 2D platformer that bleeds atmosphere, and I mean it absolutely bleeds it. There's not many games out there that has as rich of an atmosphere as Limbo does. Now, it'll only take you a couple hours to complete. This is not a very long game, but it's definitely worth your time as it's an all-time great independent game, and you'll remember it for years and years to come. As for your day one release though, that would be Bro Force Forever. Now this is technically a 2015 release, but it is also coming to Game Pass alongside its much awaited update that expands its campaign with new unlocks, six new characters, and four new challenge levels. It's actually a pretty fun action-packed side scroller and as an added bonus it does support four player co-op if you want to bring some friends along for the ride. Again, I'd say that this is a smaller line of games for Xbox Game Pass, but honestly, this is kind of the calm before the storm type of deal here. Uh, later this month, you do have Sea of Stars that will be launching into Game Pass Day 1 on August 29th. I mean, that game looks absolutely stunning. It is inspired by Chrono Trigger, coming from the same developers who created The Messenger. And then in September, you have two behemoths with Starfield and then Liza P. So it's about ready to get real crazy for you subscribers out there. Uh, but in the meantime, still check out some of these new Game Pass editions. Oh, and for you Jet Set Radio fans out there, I know you all have been anxiously awaiting a new release if, you know, Sega ever decides they want to give us one. Come on, Sega. Let's make it happen. But in the meantime, the next best thing right now is Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. This game is positioned as a spiritual successor, and it's set to release later this month on August 18th for PC and the Nintendo Switch. What about Xbox and PlayStation, though? That's kind of been the big question for a while, and, well... It's now been answered. Xbox and PlayStation fans won't have to wait too long after all as it's now officially slated for a September 1st release. Yeah, that's kind of an odd one-two punch, just a two-week Nintendo Switch timed exclusive. I don't know. I kind of wonder what happened there, but uh, this game continues to look good, especially for you Jet Set Radio fans out there, and I'm happy to see it go to all platforms sooner rather than later. Now that's not the only spiritual successor that got some good news because Ratatan on Kickstarter was funded in less than one single hour. Now if you don't know what this game is and why people are so excited about it, that's because this is a spiritual successor to the popular PSP rhythm series, Patapon. And oh, by the way, it's also coming from the same creator. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of potential when it comes to Ratatan, and uh, Patapon fans have absolutely got to be thrilled with its fast start on Kickstarter. We at the very least know that this game will happen now, uh, but here's the thing. If you want this game on console, you might want to go ahead and spread the word or fund it yourself because it still hasn't reached its stretch goals, which includes 
a console release. It does, however, appear to be on track as it only needs another $60,000 as of this recording. So again, good news for you Patapon fans out there. Let's go and get into this Xbox news though because this sounds like they have some big plans for Gamescom just later this month. This was reported by Insider Gaming which said this. As reported via Xbox Newswire earlier this month, Xbox is planning one of the biggest booths it's ever had at Gamescom this year. This seemingly isn't just marketing talk either, with Insider Gaming being told by its sources that the team is going all out this year for the annual event. It's understood that playable games will include the likes of the highly anticipated Forza, Stalker 2, and Towerborn. With these games being playable to attendees, we should expect to hear more details on each of these games during the event. Gamescom's opening night live is one of the most likely places for such announcements, which promises numerous world premieres and exciting announcements. So yeah, with this in mind, Xbox fans, you are absolutely going to want to tune in for this event. Forza is obviously a staple name for the brand, so I mean, you're going to have a lot of fans look forward to that, but Stalker 2, this is one of their most interesting third-party exclusives. So far, it actually looks really good visually. It will launch directly into Game Pass Day 1, which is a nice bonus, uh, but this studio has faced a more than difficult development cycle being originally located in Ukraine. With everything happening over there, they had to relocate, and, and that has caused some delays, but we will get an update, a playable update, at Gamescom. I'm really rooting for this team, and I'm excited to see the follow-up to the original Stalker titles, which are still great all these years later. One of the reasons that Xbox fans should be just so thrilled about this Gamescom announcement, though, is that it, it's kind of the next chapter for Xbox. Now, what I mean by that is that back in June, if you remember right, Xbox's Matt Booty, after their big showcase, was asked about games like Perfect Dark and State of Decay 3 not being there. And he was quick to respond as he said this, We have Gamescom, we have the Game Awards, we also have another event earlier in the year. And now, this report by Insider Gaming lines up with this comment as well. June was not the end of Xbox's announcements. This will not be another year where they completely rely on the E3 month alone. It's not the be-all, end-all showcase. Now, they're not only making announcements in abundance, as we've kind of seen throughout the year, but they're also spreading them out. I mean, if you think about it. Just earlier this year, they had their Xbox Inside Direct where we got games like Hi-Fi Rush, then an explosion at their June showcase, and now just two short months later, they'll also have another big presence at Gamescom. But even with all that, is still sounds like there's more in store. They've already suggested that they will be at the Game Awards this year, plus they might have their own event to start 2024. So what I think is happening here is that we're now at a point where Xbox has enough games in development that they can be at all of these different events in a big way. Plus, they have enough content for their own digital showcases on top of that. All those acquisitions that they've made over the years are starting to pay off as they're starting to churn out games for Xbox. They no longer are tied to contracts pre-acquisition, and with years of work, these studios are now ready to showcase their next games exclusively built for Xbox. So for all you Xbox fans out there, it looks like that we are officially beyond the Xbox first party drought. From this point forward, I think fans should expect major releases year in and year out for Xbox, including some more big announcements. Now, one trend that we've really seen take off over the last year or so are PC gaming handhelds. First, the Steam Deck kind of paved the way. Valve has had a ton of success, and then you had the ROG Ally earlier this year. That kind of brought some competition over to the Steam Deck, but it sounds like this is just kind of the beginning. Now, Lenovo is also reportedly setting up to release their own PC gaming handheld. This is coming from Windows Central, where their sources claim that this new handheld will sport an 8-inch display with AMD Phoenix processing. There, however, is no indication on its release date or even its price, but this is actually something to pay attention to, especially if you're on a market for a device like this. See, what I think is happening here is that we will start to see a lot more of these PC gaming handhelds in the coming years because not only do we have the technology now, but it's almost kind of like a gaming laptop. Some people might prefer a gaming handheld as opposed to a gaming notebook. So I think we're going to see a lot of different companies try their hands on a device like this, which honestly, that, that will be great for consumers. The more competition that we see here, 
the more improvements that we'll see in the coming years. It also could possibly even catch Microsoft's attention. See, Windows isn't exactly built with gaming handhelds in mind, so when you have the ROG Ally and something like this, this new Lenovo device, it is something to keep in mind. But that also kind of takes me back to a story that we heard quite a while ago, that there was some Microsoft employees who internally pitched a Windows gaming handheld experience. Uh, sadly, it never really took off, but I think looking back on it, that will be a mistake by Microsoft. As more and more companies start to push PC handhelds out like we're seeing here, it would be nice to have a Windows experience that was built with these machines in mind. Instead though, what we're kind of seeing right now is that these companies, they're having to build their own apps to kind of make it feel like a better uh, console-like experience. I think Asus did an okay job with the ROG Ally personally. I've really been enjoying it myself. No, it's not perfect, uh, but it'll be interesting to see what other companies do as well. And it, you know, again, I think that Microsoft might want to reconsider maybe making a more gaming handheld experience. Crossing my fingers for that, but either way, PC gaming handhelds appears to be a big part of future gaming. Lastly here though, we did get an update for the highly anticipated Lost Soul aside at China Joy. This is one of the most promising upcoming Chinese developed games and fans have had their eyes on this game for years now. It kind of has this Final Fantasy-esque vibe to it, maybe some Devil May Cry with some crazy over-the-top action sequences. Uh, the potential is definitely there, which they once again showcase with its latest trailer. Uh, but there was actually some news right at the end because they revealed it's not just coming over to PlayStation as originally believed. It is also slated for a PC release as well, which I think honestly makes a lot of sense. Most Chinese gamers do play on PC, and it also gives Lost Soul Aside an even better opportunity worldwide. Uh, this includes millions up on millions of more gamers. However, unfortunately, the same can't be said for the PlayStation 4. It does appear the PlayStation 4 version has been cancelled, and I know that might be disappointing for those that still have yet to upgrade, but this is something that we're starting to see a lot more of. It's that time of the generation where game developers fully transition over to the PlayStation 5. After all, it's now sold 40 plus million consoles, and it's still rapidly growing, uh, but it also allows developers to fully utilize its extra power, which it seems Lost Soul Side needs. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, and coming off the Switch 2 dev kit leak, I asked you all, would you prefer Nintendo make the Nintendo Switch 2 cheaper with an LCD screen or more expensive with an OLED? And yeah, the results here were quite telling because most of you all would prefer an OLED by a pretty large margin, and honestly, I'm with you all here, I would prefer an OLED myself, but I'm going to be okay just so long as Nintendo includes a good quality screen, whether it's LCD or OLED. Uh, I think that that's kind of the big conundrum for Nintendo, though. I mean, I get that they want to keep its price low. That's probably going to be the number one thing for the more casual crowd. Us hardcore gamers, we're going to want that OLED. But for that more casual crowd, they're going to want to keep that price down. But at the same time, it's still important to have a good display. So at the very least, hope that if they do decide on an LCD, they'll at least make it a good quality display. LCD does not automatically mean that it will be bad. I mean, I guess, I guess we'll see, but my opinion is still remains the same. What I would personally like to see them do, and I think this is the best case scenario here, is that Nintendo will release two SKUs. One, a cheaper LCD version, and then a more premium OLED. That would be kind of the best case scenario in my opinion. I hope that's what they do, but you know, this is Nintendo that we're talking about here, so I imagine they'll probably save the OLED model for an upgrade later on. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.